Hi there. So this is Dr. Dave Anderson, um, Assistant Professor of Electrical Engineering at University of Minnesota Duluth. I'm making this video essentially for my Electronics 1 class, but it can really be used by anybody who's interested in LT spice or simulation of um, circuits used in guitar effects or something similar to that, audio effects or amplifiers. So in this video I'm going to show in LT Spice how to design a simple effect circuit simulation, um, run a transient simulation on that and look at the FFT of the output including all the harmonics and then um, maybe we'll run an AC analysis too just to see what that looks like and then um, I'll show how to actually simulate what it sounds like by using a wave file as the input. So here's LT Spice. I'll start a new circuit. And so I'm going to do the simplest possible effect circuit, which is this thing called a bass fuzz. And I don't know if any company ever really made this as an effects box, but it's kind of ubiquitous all over the internet and it's really simple. So if you just search for bass fuzz, this will come up as um, a million different pictures of schematics. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to put in there is a BJT transistor, and I'll choose a 2N3904 just because they're pretty common. Uh, I'm going to ground the emitter of that. So the input is coupled um, to the base through a, let's see, what is it? Uh, 4.7 microfarad capacitor. So let's add in a voltage source for the input then. Now I will ground the negative end of that. So let's do a couple things to set up this voltage source. Uh, doesn't need a DC value because I'm not going to do a DC operating point simulation. Let's, uh, for the transient simulation, let's set it up to have an amplitude of 100 millivolts. That's um, a somewhat common, uh, maybe that's kind of a high value, but um, that'll show off the distortion characteristics pretty nicely. That's uh, that's a, a reasonable value that you can expect to see coming out of a guitar pickup. Uh, for frequency, let's do 1 kilohertz, and then we don't need to put anything else in there. Then for the AC analysis, I'll put an AC voltage of 1, so that's 0 decibels. Uh, let me move this just so there's no overlap between components and, um, and this uh, dialogue here. Okay, so then we've got a diode connecting the base of the transistor to the collector. So I'll connect that there. I'm going to choose a 1N914 diode there. Um, shoot, I have some overlapping stuff here. That's totally fine, but I kind of don't like that. Just for illustration purposes, I'm going to try and clean this up. We can choose different transistors and different diodes, and this is actually one of the fun parts about doing it this way, is you don't have to build the circuit. Um, you can just simulate it and kind of see what things will sound like before you actually build it. And it, it is pretty reasonable um, sounding. It, it sounds These simulations always sound pretty close to when you actually build them with the real components. Uh, this is a 100K resistor that connects the collector of the BJT to the voltage source, which I haven't put in yet, so I'm going to make that a 9 volt source, just DC 9 volts. Let's zoom out, and then I'll connect that here. And finally, the output is coupled through a capacitor of value... 100 nanofarads 
And there are a lot of variations of this circuit too. So, you know, you don't have to use these component values necessarily. Um, lots of people have experimented around with different values here and there, but uh, this is kind of the basic version. And then a 100K resistor, that's usually a pot at the output for volt or for volume control. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to make it a pot. We'll just have it at max volume all the time because uh, all that does is scale the, you know, the volume of the output up or down. So we're not really interested in hearing what it sounds like at half volume. That's not very interesting. I will label the output V out here. Um, cool. So let's save that now. I'll call it base fuzz. And let's set up first a transient simulation. So let's do a transient simulation um, up to 10 milliseconds. That should be good enough. So let's look at the input, just a sine wave at the input. Now let's look at the output. Ooh, so definitely clipped. Um, yeah, so that's definitely adding a lot of harmonics. If we want to actually um, take a look at those things, we can right click on the graph and then go to view FFT. So now we can click the two waveforms that we want to see the FFT of and click OK. And we're going to see the FFT of those two waveforms. So the green is the FFT of the input, which should only have one frequency there and um, up to here where things start getting wonky it does then the outputs got a lot of other frequencies so we can see that it has both even and odd harmonics so we have a peak here at one kilohertz a peak at two kilohertz then three four five so uh let's see what is this one it's hard to tell six maybe so two three four five six yeah, so actually the even harmonics are pretty strong in this circuit. That um, that type of thing tends to make these sound pretty good. Um, so that's pretty neat. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's do an AC simulation instead, just for the fun of it. So I'm going to right click on that simulation command. We'll go to AC analysis instead. Um, in some versions of LT Spice, it doesn't work to do this. It never updates, but let's see if this works. So I'll do 100 points per decade. I'll sweep from 1 hertz to 1 megahertz. Okay, that did update, so we're good to go. Um, now let's run those. Okay, so we can see uh, the input versus the output. It's got a gain of 40-ish dB. Let's see, 41 dB, something like that. Um, that gain of, you know, a little over 100 isn't really allowed by... The circuit that would be uh, let's see times 10 is 1 volt then times 10 again is 10 volts so 10 volts at the output isn't allowed the the circuit clips it before it gets there and um, we've got corner frequencies so high passed at uh, I don't know maybe 30 Hertz here um, that's that comes from this capacitor and this capacitor and then low passed at a pretty high frequency um, that could actually let in some interference. If we wanted to, we could add some extra components to low pass that at a lower frequency since we can't hear anything really above 20 kilohertz. Um, but that's what, uh, that's what the AC simulation looks like. Okay, cool. So now let's simulate and hear what it actually sounds like. Um, so... I'm going to control and right click on the input and for the value instead of that being a sine wave I'm going to type wave file equals guitar dot wave I have a wave file already made called guitar dot wave that's got uh, me just jamming some power chords on my guitar um, straight into a recording device so it doesn't sound particularly good but that's the signal that you would get if you 
were to plug this into a guitar pedal. So it's a pretty realistic simulation of what you would actually hear if this were a, an actual effects box. Okay, so that will run that. Okay, so now I need to change the um, the simulation command back to a transient simulation. And my wave file is about five seconds long, so I'm going to put a five here. So transient simulation up to five seconds. Now I need to put another spice directive in here so that you can hear the wave file output. And uh, it actually gets written uh, to another, like the simulated output gets written to another file that we can listen to. So I'm going to say dot wave and then you need to have a path in here for a file to get written to. I've already um, copied that so there's my path to a file. Um, then I need to put in the number of bits, the sampling rate, so 16 bits, 44.1 kilohertz, and the name of the node that I want to write to the output. Um, I guess it could be a current as well, but it um, makes a lot more sense to do a voltage at a node. So that's V, uh, V out, because I've labeled the output node V out there. So now I place that on the schematic as well, right there. And let's run the simulation. Okay, so uh, this is all just noise at the beginning of the file. It just goes up to five seconds, so it's going to take a little while to run through the entire simulation. I don't think we've actually gotten to any real guitar yet. There we go. Now it's showing the actual guitar playing through. So the green line there is the input. That's the original file. The blue line is the simulated output. Cool, there we go. So we have simulated the output from this circuit. So now let's listen to that. So let's just play the basic file first. <laughs> guitar.wave. Okay, and now let's play the simulated output. Ah, pretty cool. It definitely sounds like a little fuzz effect. So now we can um, go through and change parameters in here if we want to. Let's change this to a different diode. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's make it a 4148. Let's change this to a different transistor. Let's just make it a 2N2222, and let's re-simulate. Now we can hear what it sounds like with a different set of components, and we can, you know, uh, make design decisions about how we want to build this thing that way. That's a fun way of doing it. Cool, that was pretty quick, and it wrote that to the WAV file automatically so now when I when the simulation is done if I just click on the new wave file I'm gonna hear that yeah that sounds a little different I mean it's still a fuzz effect but it definitely sounded different from before um, yep so there you go pretty cool <laughs>